Hi, I'm James Richards, helping you to be all you can be by all that God is. The way. Yeah, so we're back looking at this topic um, of uh, being blessed, what it means. Uh, unpacked that in a video before this. Well, there's two before this, so if you have time, check them out. You can watch this separately, but I would encourage you to watch all of them because they give different aspects of what it means. It's been personal to me, uh, real to me. I've lived this out. I'm not just talking it from theology. Uh, uh, in my experience, it makes sense. Again, check out video one, check out video two, but I'm jumping into three right now. And I'm going to be looking at what Jesus said about the man who is blessed. And this is taken from Matthew 5. And from Matthew 5, from verse 1 down through to, I think, to verse 11, he says, Blessed is the man, blessed is the man, blessed is the man. Blessed is the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are those who thirst and hunger after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy, and so on, and so on. And what you realise is that all these are, are pointing to personal things, characteristics of someone. So we know straight away that being blessed is to do with, again, a, a man's character. It's to do with his disposition, which we unpacked from the first video. It's got nothing to do with what he possesses, how well he's doing in his health, what his circumstances are like. It's the place that he moves from. It's the place that he lives from. He's not trying to get to. And with that understanding, it really helps because it makes you realize that it's not something you can necessarily get, but it's just something you are. You are blessed, but you do get it. You get it by the Spirit of God. We established that in the previous videos. But we're talking about how God has blessed, and we know that we have it because when persecution hits, when hardship hits, when hard times come, we deal with it in a different way. This is why these things, maybe, why God has left them behind, because they further prove that God is real. God exists, and He exists in me. He exists in those who believe in Him. He exists in you if you believe in Him. And why we can even smile in the face of some very dark situations. What Jesus is actually describing is the perspective of somebody. If to do it from a particular way, they are blessed. So blessed is the pure in heart, for they shall see God. But they already are on that path. And this is talking much about not necessarily how you need to be, but how you already are. If you already are that way, you're blessed. You don't want nothing bad in the heart. You don't want nothing negative. You don't want nothing... And it's the Spirit of God that helps us to, to hold that disposition. Now, you can do this in your own efforts. But it would be your strength. And again, circumstances of trouble, persecution, sickness, money issues will pull to the fore where your strength lies. But what I like about it is that Jesus lists all these things and he finishes up saying, look, Blessed are the persecuted. So you're in a great place and you understand who God is, no matter what comes, because your blessedness was given before anything else. It overrides everything else. And yet, you're still going to hit tough times. Why are you content? If you're content in him, it doesn't matter what times we're going to hit. If you're content in him, it doesn't matter what's coming. If you're content in him, it doesn't matter how much you have. Do we disregard these things? No. But do we put these things as blockages or reasons for not serving? No. Because we are already content. Sadly, for most people, when I say, are you blessed? They think, yeah, I'm blessed because I don't have no sickness. 
Yeah, I'm blessed because my bank account is fine. Yeah, I'm blessed because I just signed some big deal. Yeah, I'm blessed because the business is going well. That's not what I mean, and that's not what the Bible's pointing to. It's not what Jesus is pointing to. Fact is the opposite. We've got to be blessed because we live in a world that's corrupt, it's fading away, and we're behind enemy lines. So let me give you a couple of warnings to round this up. This is to do with blessings. Now, are natural blessings valid? Of course they are. And it's a good thing. God gave us the world and everything in it. It's a big blessing. Natural. Huge. You can't top it. But if we confuse, if we confuse blessings to be the goal of life, those natural ones, they will end up trapping you. Because they cannot give you the contentment that you get from God's spirit. They cannot give you the contentment that you get on an interpersonal level. That's why God didn't fix things by giving us stuff. He fixed everything by giving us him because we're relational, we're beings. We need that. That's what helps us to go on. At the end of the day, we know this because when it comes to our loved ones, our family, when they're coming from war or when they're on a deathbed, when they're really sick, we, 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 we almost recollaborate and realize what's important. And everything else that we've given a lot of time, for honest, fades into the distance. Now the Bible keeps people central all the time. Bar God. Well, that's the great commandment. Love God with everything and love people as you love yourself. God, people, stuff. We live in a world today where it's like stuff, people, God. God is last on there. Stuff is first. People are second. God is third. Crazy world. This is why it's easy to think of your blessedness as being the things you possess. The condition that you find yourself in. The place in life that you've arrived at. And it might seem like success on the outside, but let me warn you. If you're successful in these things, and these things that are keeping you away from the truth, that your real contentment is somewhere else, they're not blessings. They are curses disguised as blessings. That's why I say to people, take your time, know your stuff. It is not good to be successful too quick. And it's not good to be successful in the wrong thing. Because if you are making money from it, if you are getting attention from it, if it's feeding something in you that you've always wanted from someone and you pursue that so it continues and it's what gives you meaning, guess what? You will fight to the tooth and nail to keep it. But it will come through one day that it doesn't work. It doesn't help you and it doesn't supply that deepest satisfaction that comes only on an interpersonal level, which is why God needs to give you him. That is what blessed is according to the Bible. So any blessing, physical or not even physical, that cuts you off from God's purpose is a curse in disguise. Makes me laugh how many people say, Oh, praise God, we come through, we got the house. Praise God, we got a new car. Praise God, I found someone to be with and we're engaged. Praise God, I put the deal through and now we're buying that land. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. And everyone's like, Yeah, clapping. And then when it all goes to pot, you don't hear anything. What happened to the car? What happened to the wife, the husband-to-be? What happened to the house? What happened to this big vision and, and plan for your business? What happened to the fact that you said God healed you and now the doctors are saying, boy, it ain't really good? What happened? i tell you what happened. We confused what it means to be blessed. And we shouted and testified 
about the wrong thing. Yes, it's great to have these things, but be honest, people. You can get these without Jesus. You can get these without God. Even down to health. This is how mind-boggling is. There are people who go into remission who don't know Jesus, who've got cancer, and it disappears, and the doctors don't know why. There are people who have got money, money, who don't care about faith. In fact, they're the complete opposite end, probably trying to destroy it. And when it comes to riches, they've got it. How does that work? It works when you understand what it means to be blessed. I am blessed. I don't care what you got, how much you got, how big it is, who cares, who loves you. God's spirit is what makes a difference. Because we all came in the same way, birth, and we're all going out the same way, death. The man who's blessed is the man who realizes that he's got what counts the most in this life. And that's his maker. So I'm done. I hope that blesses you. <laughs> Challenge me. I'm gonna speak to you soon on another topic. Who knows what that will be? But stay posted. Please subscribe, share this video. Uh, uh, let me know what you think. You may disagree. It's great. Let's talk. We'll keep going. I'm going to help you to be all you can be by all that God is. And I'm off now to get ready and do something fun besides this because this is fun. Yep. So, guys, peace in Jesus' name. I am blessed. I am blessed every day of my life. I am blessed. Are you blessed? Go and check it out. See you soon. Ciao. Be all you can be, but all that God is. Guys, if you're loving it, please share and remember to subscribe right here at The Way. <laughs>